Hey guys, and welcome to Slash Rex Games. In this tutorial, I will be demonstrating the uh, while and the do until loops. And to do so, I've created this little guess the number application. And basically, the user has to guess the number that the program has decided when it's created. And if the user gets the well, the number wrong, it's just going to ask the user for another number. And it's going to keep doing that until it gets it right. And it's going to tell you all the amount of guesses that the player chose. And in the end, it's going to say, uh, you know, how well you did or whatever. So, it's going to use a while or a do until loop. I'm going to show you how both those loops are exactly the same. Well, they, they work in the same way, but they have a slight difference. So here we have guess the number. We click try. Pops up, remember, between 0 and 9. So we guess 1. Oh, wrong. Try another guess. We're going to try 0, the default. Again. Let's try 6. Wrong. How about 9? Oh, there we are. Confounded. I really thought you wouldn't get that one. It did take you 4 tries, though. So, that's basically it. We guessed four times, fourth one got it right, and if we go try again, it's just going to restart the app. So, basically what the application is saying is that if the guess that the player inputs is not the same as the number that the application has chosen, then just keep asking the player to input uh, a value. So, this is very good for uh, input validation. Perhaps you're asking the user for their username, and they input a whole lot of random characters or something that is illegal. Um, then you can use a do until or a while loop to make sure that it keeps prompting them for a uh, for the correct input. So let's jump into the application. I'll show you exactly how these two loops are similar and how they differ. So this is the structure we're working with. We have the introduction, which just says guess the number. We have uh, the two buttons, try and try again, over there. And then uh, font just sets up the font for the end game. Uh, right up, we've got the question. That's just to display the introduction. Uh, we've got the buttons try and try again. Object winner. This is the uh, winning message right at the end. And then this is just for visualization. It randomizes. Um, all those little numbers make it look very dramatic. And then we have the two rooms. Guess this. There we go. We've got all these little randomizers all over the place. Then we've got to guess the, oh, that's the title and then the try button. And then the winning thing has just got to try again. And uh, that is the object winner that displays the amount of tries that the player did. So, in object button try, in the create, it's going to uh, create this button right in the middle of the room. It's going to randomize, it's going to see the randomizer, so that every time we play this game it's going to be completely different. It's going to give global load number a random integer between 0 and 9, that's inclusive, so it can include 0 and 9. It's going to set the player's guess to minus 1, and then attempts to zero. So now that we've got that, we need to create a left button event, left pressed event, and we're going to bring this up here with some code. What do we want to add? Well, the format well, of the while loop is as such. We have while, we have a condition, and then we have parentheses right over here, these brackets. So ultimately, while this condition uh, holds, it's going to do something in here. Right? So for this case, we're going to say while guess is not equal to global dot number. Okay, so while the player hasn't got the right guess, it's going to execute whatever happens in this code right over here. So for instance, we've got uh, we have to first take into account if the player is when we are playing for the first time, we're going to tell him well guess an integer between what and what. So we're going to say here if guess is greater than nine uh, or guess is less than zero. Uh, then we're going to say get equals uh, get integer. So with get integer, we don't have to worry about error uh, input, incorrect input, because it can only take integers. So here we say remember a value between zero and nine. Let me say inclusive over there. Uh, bam. Okay. What are we missing? Default value zero. Okay, so it's going to say remember if you uh, a value between zero and nine and then inclusive. Okay, otherwise if it's there, I don't know if, one of, if they've already attempted one. We're going to say here get equals get integer, and then here we're going to say wrong. Try again. And one of those, and then again zero default. Like that. Right, so yeah, if it's the first time, because I've set um, in the create, I've set guess to minus one, so it's gonna 
go straight to here saying it's the first time since. Remember, a value between 0 and 9 inclusive. Otherwise, if it's there second, third, or nth attempt, it's going to say wrong, try again. And then over here, it's going to say global.attempts plus plus, increase those, and uh, guess equals get. Like that. Okay, so once that's done, then we're going to go to next room. Go to next. Cut. So ultimately, with this thing, we can say go to room next because obviously after this code has executed, the user has guessed the correct number. So it goes, well, guess is not equal to global number. Remember, guess is set to minus 1. So obviously it's not equal to global number because global number can only be between 0 and 9. Then it's going to jump to either one of these, asking... Um, the user to input a, a value depending on whether he's gone before or if it's the first time. Then once it's done that and it has received a, a value that is valid, then it's going to increase the number of attempts. It's going to set guess to that get. I mean, you could you could just say that if you want. Yeah, let's just do that. Right, like that. Okay. Then it's going to get to the end of the statement, and then it's going to go back to the sta uh, the condition here and say is guess um, equal to global that number and if it isn't then it's just going to do this code again it's going to keep doing that until guess is correct right and then finally it's going to go to the next room where it where it will display um the global attempts number of attempts and say oh well compound it you got it right how could you do that you are some sort of wizard or i don't know something like that anyway so that is the while statement and when the while executes it it executes it first tests the statement so, for instance, if somewhere else in the game you had uh, set up this value guess, then it would get you and say, well, guess is not equal to global that number. But, for instance, if guess is equal to global that number, then it doesn't even have to do any of this. and can just skip it and go straight to the next room. See? So, with the while loop, it may not execute at all. See? Now, if we had to look at the do until loop, which is very similar to the do while loop as in other languages like C++, um, it starts as do open up one of these, down, until, condition, and then we got our termination character. So here we'd say, do something until, um, then we've got to say here, well, until guess equals global dot number. See? So we do whatever's within these parentheses until we have uh, guessed the right number. And then if we have guessed the right number, then we can exit, we can escape from this loop and go to the next one. And basically, the code is exactly the same because these two loops ultimately do the same thing with very minor differences. The do loop does this at least once. No matter if guess is equal to global or number right in the beginning, it'll still ask the user to input an integer. And then in the end, it will say, well, is guess equal to global or number? If it isn't, it's going to do it again. If it is, it's going to escape this loop and go to the next one. So notice, the while loop doesn't have to do it at all. It can completely skip this if the condition is um, is met. So, yeah, well, whereas the do loop, the do until loop, um, does it at least one time. So that's great. Whatever, those are the differences. And if you run them, I'll show you that it'll do exactly the same thing. So let's comment out. Let's run this application with the while loop. See what happens. Okay, run. There we go. Guess the number. Try. Uh, we're going to say 1. Wrong. 2. We're going to keep going until we find it. 3. 4. Oh, 5. This one's a hard one. 6. 7. 8. 9. Oh, uh, boy, that's odd. 0. It was 0. I found it. I really thought you wouldn't get that one. It did take you 10 tries, though. So this thing's mocking us. It's telling us that we are pathetic. It took us 10 tries to guess the values. It was the worst possible outcome. So now we could say, you know, try again. So there we see that during the while loop, it did that. Now if we had to close this and go back to the try over here, and instead we're going to use the do. So we comment out this. Uh, some of these. So now it's going to do the. It's going to go into the do loop. And you'll notice it'll do exactly the same thing. Okay. Prompted with the same thing. Try. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
It was eight this time. Converted, I already thought you wouldn't get that one. It did take you nine tries though. Exactly the same thing. See that? So ultimately the loops do the, the same work. Um, they can be used to do the exact same. But the only difference being that the while loop will never have to get to um, execute any of this code if the condition is uh, is met, right? Whereas the do loop will do it at least one time, and it will stop when, for example, guess equals to global number. Exactly the same as that. So you have to decide whether you want um, the code within the loop to execute at least once. If you don't, use a while loop. If you want it to be executed at least once, use a do loop. That's as simple as it gets. Um, yeah, so that's the structure. The while loop has the condition before the code. The do loop has the condition after the code, just like that. So, well, that, that's pretty much as simple as both of those loops go. Um, thanks for watching this video. If you found it, or oh, I hope you found it educational and helpful, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe for more. Um, you can also like my Facebook page. And I will see you guys next time for another great Game Maker tutorial.